Welcome back to Learn Electrics. In this video, we will be looking at continuity and insulation resistance tests of electrical cables. This is often overlooked by some electricians, both new and experienced, even though the tests are required by the wiring regulations and they take only a few minutes to fully complete. The question is, why should we test electrical cables for continuity and for insulation resistance. Most times cables are hidden from view behind walls, inside conduit and so on. All that we have are the two ends of the same cable, we hope. Today we are concentrating only on the actual cables as they would be at first fix, that is the naked cable before any of the accessories and appliances have been attached. In a later video, we will explain how to test cables in lighting and power circuits. Maybe we have damaged cables behind the wall. This has been caused by building work. Perhaps the cables have been cut when pulled through trunking systems. There are many ways that a cable can suffer damage. And we may even have a cable that is damaged in two or more places. How are we going to find any of these problems before we energise the cables? It is infinitely better to find the problem during dead testing than to wait for it to go bang during live testing. We should not rely on just one test, the continuity test, to declare that a cable is OK. A full set of tests will include the low ohms continuity test and the insulation resistance test. But why do both tests, I hear you ask? If the cable is damaged, we may get a fail. But we can also get false results, perhaps double fails, that indicate a pass when it is actually a fail. It is important to complete all the tests to be sure that the cable is in fact OK. And we should always begin with the continuity or low ohms test. For a good cable, continuity means that the copper is continuous from one end to the other. We are testing for low ohms, low resistance. And as a guide, any cable in a domestic property will usually be a lot less than 5 ohms in resistance. The first step, always, before doing any testing, is to set up your test meter and to make sure that it is functioning correctly. Different manufacturers make their meters with slight differences to those of other manufacturers, but if you learn how to set up your own meter correctly, then it is very easy to adjust to someone else's meter. My meter has three sockets for the test leads at the top edge of the meter, coloured red, black and green. Continuity testing is a dead test, so I only need two leads, the red and the black. It does matter that I put them in the correct holes, since using the wrong hole will give me the wrong results. My meter uses the red and black sockets, Another meter that I had used the red and green sockets. Know your meter. The first steps to proving correct meter function are Number one, put the test leads into the correct sockets. Number two, link the leads together with the crocodile clips. Number three, set your meter to the low ohms continuity range. And number four, press the test button and observe the results. Some meters will auto start the test when they find continuity. My meter here has indicated zero ohms of resistance. This has proved that the test leads are in the correct holes, that the test leads are good and that the meter has compensated for any test lead resistance. Now we will do what we call a fresh air test, a test to check what the maximum resistance reading is on this meter, in other words an open circuit. Number one, test leads in the correct holes. Number two, separate the crocodile clips this time so that there is no connection between them. Number three, leave the test meter still set on the low ohms range. And number four, press the test button and read the result of this fresh air test. For my meter, the maximum reading is 1,999 ohms. It could actually be higher than this. We've now proved that the meter will read zero ohms 
and will also indicate a high resistance. Other meters can have a maximum as low as 19.9 ohms, which is actually OK, since we will normally be expecting good results to be less than 5 ohms. And other meters will indicate up to 2,999 ohms, or even greater. And yet other meters will indicate OL for over limit. It means the same thing, they have measured fresh air. The wiring regulations require us to test the continuity of the circuit protective conductors, the CPC. And this is still affectionately called the earth cable by many electricians. But how can we test the earth cable on its own if the test leads will only reach a couple of metres and the two ends of the earth cable are at opposite ends of the house? Fortunately for us, most times we will be running a phase and a neutral conductor to the same place as the earth conductor. So why not use one of these as a wander lead? It will save us from running a separate wander lead around the house. We can link the far end of the phase and earth cable together with a connecting block, Wagos, or as I prefer, short crocodile clips. This test here has shown a result of 0 0.68 ohms, which is about right if this was a 45 metre length of 2.5 singles in conduit. Repeat this test for the neutral to earth conductors. And if we have similar readings, we would say that the cables have passed the continuity part of the tests. It could be a length of twin and earth cable. Using the phase conductor again as a wander lead, the test voltage, which is only about 4 volts, will travel along the earth or CPC through the crocodile clips and back to the meter along the brown phase conductor. If this was a 37 meter length of 2.5 twin and earth cable, we should have a reading of around 0 0.72 ohms. And if our meter indicates close to this result, then we have a pass. Now remove the crocodile clips from the phase wire and reposition them onto the neutral so that we can now test the neutral to earth resistance. We do not make any changes at the meter. Press the test button and we have a similar reading to the previous test. And by completing these two tests, we have now proved that all three conductors are continuous. What results would we get if one of the cables under test was broken, as shown here? The path along the phase wire for the returning test current is interrupted. Something has caused major damage to the cable. This will register as an open circuit and the meter will indicate a maximum reading, 1999 on my meter or OL. Because we set our meter correctly, we already know what the meter would indicate for a broken circuit for a fresh air measurement. We can record this as a fail, investigate it and repair. But I mentioned a few slides ago about double faults giving good readings. What might be the outcome if our broken cable also had a screw or a nail through it, perhaps caused by some building work? Or the insulation might have been cut by pulling the cable through the sharp edges on trunking or conduit. Now the exposed copper of the phase conductor is touching the bare copper of the earth conductor. They are said to be shorted together, they are in contact with each other. And the two faults will cancel each other out. In our example, a reading of 0 0.32 is returned by the meter. This may look okay, but as you begin to understand cable resistances, you may realise that this is not the 0 0.72 that you were expecting for this length of cable. How is this? The test current flows along the CPC or earth wire and would normally find its path blocked by the broken phase conductor. But because the touching cables are closer to the test meter, the test current can complete its path by taking a shortcut and flowing from the earth across the touching cables and back to the meter. It will give a false good reading, a false pass. Don't worry if your knowledge of cable resistances is not too good. The next set of tests should still find the fault and we have a series of videos planned for fault finding. So a quick summary so far. Often we cannot see the damage, 
it is all hidden from view behind a wall, in a ceiling or inside a conduit. So, we don't assume that the cable is okay, we test. And when we are happy, we can move on to the second set of tests. Now we can do the insulation resistance tests, and we always do these after the continuity tests. We are testing that the PVC insulation and the sheathing around the copper conductors is intact. No breaks, no cuts, no nails or screws, no crushed cables. We have already proved continuity of the copper. Now we want to make sure that the phase, the neutral and the earth are all physically separate from each other. For the test, for domestic wiring, 500 volts is placed between the copper conductors. In a good test, the electric will not find a path from one conductor to the other. It is assumed, therefore, that if 500 volts cannot find a way through, then all will be OK when operating normally at 230 volts. As a guide to the sort of results to expect, a test in a domestic property will usually give a result of hundreds of millions of ohms of resistance between the conductors. As with continuity testing, the first thing that we want to do is to set our meter correctly. The first steps to proving the meter functions are number one, put the test leads in the correct sockets on your meter, which will be the same as for the previous continuity tests. Link the leads together with the crocodile clips, set your meter to the insulation resistance range and press the test button and observe the result. My meter, shown here, has indicated zero ohms of resistance. This is a fail for an insulation resistance test, but the whole purpose of this is to prove that the test leads are in the correct holes and that the test leads are good. Remember also that this test will produce a 500 volt test voltage and anything and anyone that is touching the crocodile clips will also be tested at 500 volts. Now we will do the same fresh air test as before, a test to check what the maximum resistance reading is on this meter. In other words, an open circuit. What would you expect to see on a good test? Number one, the test leads can remain in the same holes. Number two, separate the crocodile clips so that there is no connection between them. The test meter will remain set on the insulation resistance range and then we can press the test button and read the results of this fresh air test. For my meter, the maximum reading is 199.9 .9 mega ohms. The meter is displaying just short of 200 million ohms of resistance, but it is likely that the resistance could actually be higher than this if the meter could display it. Some meters go as high as 2,000 million ohms, but there is little advantage in having such high readings displayed. We have now proved that the meter is set up correctly and that it can measure high and low resistances. To carry out the insulation resistance tests, this is what we will do. Remove all the links, all the wagos, and the crocodile clips that were connected at a shorting link between the cables. We are testing that the individual conductors are not connected together, that they have no cuts and no exposed copper that is shorting between two or more conductors. Then clip one meter lead onto the phase and the other meter lead onto the earth or CPC, as we should properly call it. Press the test button, being aware that this is a 500 volt test and everywhere the conductors go, the 500 volts goes too. Should you touch it, the test current is very small and is unlikely to cause any harm, but you will stand up very quickly. It will cause an incredible reaction. Please be careful. The result for a good test, a pass, is a reading in excess of one mega ohm, one million ohms. For new cables, this reading will normally be many hundreds of times bigger, which is better. Let's say it reads 299 mega ohms. This is 299 million ohms of resistance between the phase and earth conductors, a good pass. Now repeat the test 
but this time between the neutral and earth conductors. Reposition the crocodile clips onto the neutral and earth, but do not alter the settings on the test meter or the cable positions on the meter. Press the test button again and wait for the result. Again, with our meter, we should have 299 megohms for a good result. And finally, test the insulation resistance between the phase and the neutral conductors. Reposition the crocodile clips onto the phase and neutral, leave the test meter set up as it was and press the test button. All being well, we will get a reading of 299 megohms, another pass. That is all three insulation resistance tests completed for a single phase domestic type cable. We tested phase to earth, neutral to earth and phase to neutral. It is essential that we complete all three combinations to ensure cable integrity. The last slide showed passes, good readings on good cables. But what if we had bad cables? Here we have the example from earlier where the phase conductor has been damaged, broken in two. The insulation resistance test will not pick up this fault if the broken ends are not touching the earth as they are shown here. This is why we perform a continuity test first. The low ohms continuity test should have detected this fault long before it got to the insulation resistance stage. And we can test our cable with a broken phase conductor and a phase to earth short that passed our continuity test earlier. The example we used of a double fault that gave us a false pass. Now the insulation resistance test will find this fault because it will discover the phase and earth short between the two conductors. In this case, it will return a reading of zero ohms, a fail. We hope that you can see from these few examples the wisdom of testing cables for low ohms continuity and for insulation resistance. By performing both sets of tests, we give ourselves the best opportunity of detecting faults in cables and being able to correct the problems before we move on to live testing. In summary then, we carry out continuity testing followed by insulation resistance testing. Always in that order, always. For continuity, we carry out two tests and for insulation resistance, we do three tests. A continuity test pass will give a low ohms reading, but the insulation resistance is the opposite. A high ohms reading is a pass. Fails are the opposite. High ohms is a fail for continuity and low ohms is a fail for insulation tests. A low ohms test voltage is just 4 to 8 volts, whilst an insulation test is typically 500 volts. In a low ohms test, we are testing the copper conductor for continuity. In an insulation test, although we connect to the copper, we are actually testing that the PVC insulation is intact, unbroken, and has no nails or screws in it. And there we have it. We hope that you found this video from Learn Electrics both useful and enjoyable and that you added more knowledge to your mental toolbox. By clicking on subscribe below, you'll have access to all of our Tech Tips videos and you'll also ensure that you don't miss our next weekly video. Clicking on subscribe also helps us and we do appreciate that small act. It does make us feel that our effort is worthwhile. Typing in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar will also give you access to all the videos. And we also have Tech Tips articles on our website which can be found at www.learnelectrics.com Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.